I'm Daniel Shin, and welcome to Discussion with the Dean on Christianity and Law. So, Dean, today's lecture was very much a very compact version of everything, I think, that we've explored throughout the past several weeks. And one aspect that hit me very hard was that I could identify very much with Pilate in the sense that it's very, very difficult in a world where law has been tainted very much with different ideologies and it's very easy for even Christians to become subject to this fear that Pilate also experiences. So could you summarize a little bit of what's happening in Pilate's argumentation that reflects his character? Yeah. So we, we, one point to make here is uh, here we have Jesus arguing in front of the tribunals of the world. So this is, this is Jesus like us as lawyers in secular courts, arguing. And uh, as, as you say, uh, I, think, I think a lot of us can understand where Pilate is coming from in that world. Uh, this is probably, uh, there, there are two ways of reading Pilate's famous line to Jesus. Uh, what is the truth? And uh, one way to read that is sort of, Pilate in a way we can't relate to. Pilate as evil, sneering, what is the truth to me? Uh, and I suggest that there's another way of reading this, which is that, that Pilate is actually torn up. He, he, he goes out immediately after saying, what is the truth? And he doesn't do what you'd expect him to do, which is to say, kill this man. He says, I find no basis for a charge against this man. Um, and if you, if you read the, the question in a more sympathetic way, he's, he's saying something which is addressed to all people before they come to know the truth, to really hold to Jesus Christ. What is the truth? What am I doing in this legal system? You're, you're, as I argue, I think uh, Jesus is making the point to him, you're doing the, the work of, of the Jews, and Pilate is going, yeah, I'm the man that's supposed to be in charge here, and I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm motivated by fear, I'm motivated by anxiety, whereas you seem to be, as he is, trusting in your Father in heaven. What's wrong with me? Um, and, and in that sense, we, we get a different kind of, of pilot uh, where we say, look, we can be in the legal system either as Jesus is, where his, his trust in the, the Father, when he says uh, to Pilate, do you know, Pilate says, why aren't you afraid of me? Jesus says, you know, you wouldn't have any power if it wasn't from my father. So I'm okay. Whereas Pilate is afraid of the Jews. He's afraid of rebellion. He's afraid of all these things. Who do you want to be in the legal system? Do you want to be, do you want to be Jesus? Or do you want to, in the name of getting more power and getting more prestige, do you want to be Pilate? And if you, if you read the argument in this way, we want to be Jesus. That's who we want to be. One aspect uh, with not necessarily the lectures that have been done so far, but previous lectures that you have done with respect to church fathers, I see echoes from their argumentation that follow in line with Jesus, where they elevate it to the point of submitting, but over, uh, in a sense, even overcoming death through that, going through that argumentation very carefully. So could you summarize a little bit of how Jesus finally elevates this final argument that he has before his crucifixion. Yeah, yeah the, the witnesses of the church, the martyrs, make themselves the argument. Their, their argument is Jesus as their introduction, Jesus as their, their middle, Jesus as their conclusion, because they're, they're threatened with death, and they say, quite honestly, I choose Jesus before I choose fear of your power. And that's a great argument because it shows an incredible and rare power that we don't find in, in the world. Uh, and Jesus does the same thing today. I mean, this is, this is the sense in which we're all supposed to be witnesses. We're all supposed to argue with words, yes, but with our, our lives, by what we're willing to sacrifice for. Every time you do something special that you otherwise wouldn't have done except for your knowledge of Jesus Christ. You're a witness. What, what, have you, what have you done today that you wouldn't have done except for the truth, that God loves you, that God has handed over his son for you so that you might live? That's the argument. 
Well, thank you for a wonderful lecture series, and I particularly enjoyed the ending where you encouraged even uh, challenges to do likewise. So if anyone is interested in the full lecture, please follow us on YouTube, and you will be able to find a link to the lecture below. Thank you, Dean Enlo. Thank you.